A local checkpoint leads to six Beaufort arrests. Governor Nikki Haley is expected to run for a second term, and Beaufort County announces a new superintendent. We'll bring you the details. All that and much more. Keep watching Beaufort. Your news starts now. Thanks for joining us for the Beaufort News. I'm Jessa Jeremiah and here are your local headlines. A checkpoint set up recently resulted in six arrests and the recovery of a stolen vehicle. The checkpoint conducted by the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office led to the arrest of 29-year-old Frank Holmes, 27-year-old Tamara Cocker, and 22-year-old Kiana Britton, who were arrested on charges of marijuana. 26-year-old Felicia Costa and 53-year-old Jerry White were arrested on charges of driving under suspension. And 57-year-old Luke Palmer was arrested for possession of crack cocaine. According to officials, the checkpoint was successful successful in preventing potential dangers. A Hardyville woman is the suspect in connection with stealing and using the credit cards of a hospice patient. An 80-year-old woman at the Hawthorne Inn told staff on January 21st that she couldn't find three credit cards that she kept in her room. The credit cards turned up recently after being used to make several unauthorized purchases. Video surveillance identified 31-year-old Shamika Kawanda Smart and her aunt, 51-year-old Finette Renee Housie, using the cards. The theft totals more than $10,000. Bluffton native Tabor Vox won the Republican nomination for the Beaufort County Council District 9 seat in the primary. Vox, who beat his oppo opponent Mark Lawson by 233 votes, is ready to get right to work so he can show the voters that they made the right decision. One of the first things he's going to do once he's sworn in as the new councilman is sit down with Lawson so the two of them can discuss some of the issues that Lawson brought to the table during the election. The council seat Vox won was previously held by Weston Newton for more than a decade. A Buford High School academic team will be heading to Washington, D.C. after winning a competition recently. The school's green team advanced in the second annual academic World Quest competition over the weekend after winning against six other high school teams, including Hilton Head High School's Columbia team. After a three-hour set of questions featuring a hundred tough topics, the team is excited to move forward. The team will be competing in the national competition on April 27th. The United Way of the Lowcountry and the University of South Carolina Beaufort partnered to spread local interest in reading over the weekend. Local authors and USCB faculty members read from their favorite children's books. The library lawn at the USCB's Hilton Head Gateway campus had tables, tents, and enthusiastic readers. The event was part of the nationwide celebration of Dr. Seuss's birthday. The Defusky Island Fire District is looking for approval from Beaufort County to build a helicopter landing pad here locally. The location that is being sought is on Hag Point Road near the main fire station. The proposal could mean trees and other greenery in the area would be removed. According to officials, if an emergency medical evacuation was needed, the landing pad would be crucial. The Beaufort County Sheriff's Office was a part of a harmful chemicals collection over the weekend. The office's drug investigation section and the county's solid waste and recycling division collected leftover cleaning products, harmful chemicals, and expired medications. The department also collected Beaufort residents' vitamins and herbal supplements. The collection was part of an effort to keep the community free of harmful containments. And those are your headlines. If you'd like additional information, please reference the media sources you see listed on your screen. Also, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Coming up, we have Pamela Brownstein joining us from the Island News with her hot off the press report. And Jamie Daly will be on location for a very special Beaufort Business Report. Stick around. Low Country Real Estate is located in historic downtown Beaufort, home to one of the most attractive real estate markets in America. We've been providing high quality service to our community for the past 24 years. Whether you're interested in buying or selling residential, resort, or commercial investment property, our professional sales staff can help you with your real estate needs. Please visit LowCountryRealEstate.com for details on all available properties in Beaufort and come see how the Low Country becomes you. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. Joining us first is Pamela Brownstein, who's here with the Island News to bring us our hot off the press report. How are you doing today, Pamela? Doing great, thank you. Good. 
Now, first, of course, we've got a very important story to ask you about. Who did the Beaufort County Board of Education select as their new superintendent? Well, after many months and more than 100 applicants, last week, the Beaufort County Board of Education finally selected Jeffrey Moss to lead the school district. He has more than 30 years of experience in education in North Carolina, where he currently is superintendent of Lee County Schools. And how exactly did the school board finally make this decision? And when exactly is Mr. Moss going to begin? Well, the board had a tough decision between the two finalists um, for the job, Mr. Moss and Gloria Davis. But school board chairman Bill Evans said that they chose Mr. Moss because of, quote, his strong commitment to technology and the history of academic improvement in his districts. And pending approval of his contracts, Mr. Moss is slated to begin by July 1st. Okay, wonderful. Now, in other school news, what can you tell us about the interim session at Buford Academy? Well, this week, between March 4th and March 8th, students um, in grades 5 through 12 at Buford Academy are taking part in interim session, which was created for the perfect purpose of expanding horizons through travel, internship, and um, community service. So examples of their activities include camping, archaeological digs, um, internships at Beaufort Memorial Hospital and other local businesses, and even a trip to New York City for a week. Very good. Now I want to ask you about this annual award. Talk to us about who was awarded, I believe it's the ninth annual Thomas H. Horton Jr. Memorial Scholarship, a very important scholarship. Yeah, um, the the recipient of the 2013 scholarship was Beaufort Academy Junior Patrick Mazio, and the scholarship is named in honor of longtime coach and teacher at Beaufort Academy, Tom Horton, who loved to travel. So Patrick Mazio will be studying in Rome this summer through a program with Brown University um, to study Italian and the humanities. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Pamela, for joining us. That's your hot off the press report. Thank you. In other news, now that the sequester has hit, the MEC says the real fiscal cliff is the continuing resolution. The MEC is asking the Beaufort community to take action. Jamie Daly has more in our Beaufort Business Report. Hi, I'm Jamie Daly Vergara with the Beaufort News Business Report, and here with me is the Chamber's Military Enhancement Committee member, John Payne. So, John, can you talk a little bit about, we've heard a lot about sequestration over the past six months. But it's something even then no one really even knew about. But now it's something obviously topping every headline. Can you explain what's going on and what, how this could really impact our community? Well, I'm, I'm glad that uh, it's the word is finally getting out. And I'd like to take uh, credit for all that because we've held a jillion meetings about it. But uh, I, I'm afraid I can't. Um, sequestration has uh, really uh, been defined over the last six months. It's like sequestering a jury, you know, you take these 12 people and, and set them in a room aside where they can't be used for anything else or talked to. Uh, sequestration does that with money. And the way sequestration works is we needed to reduce the, uh, uh, the budget. So uh, they came up with a solution that uh, sounded so bad that nobody would ever do it. And that is they, they would cut 10% uh, off of all of the uh, accounts uh, except Medicare, Medicaid, uh, those untouchable accounts. Uh, and by cutting 10% uh, off of everything, they would achieve their goal. The problem is that uh, when you cut 10% off of everything and, and uh, the, the programs that could be cut without a lot of pain are cut, and the ones that, that need to be cut aren't cut as much as they ought to be. So uh, hopefully that's a, a quick, uh, uh, idea of, of what sequestration does. It's, it's the, the Department of Defense is one of those accounts that uh, uh, is not cast in concrete. It's up for grabs every year. Now the Chamber's Military Enhancement Committee has been working very hard just to kind of get the word out and really protect our bases. Explain kind of your guys' mission and, and what's been going on. Well that is our mission, to protect our bases and make sure that uh, uh, that, that we don't lose any of our installations. Uh, the, 
during the last, uh, every, everybody I think is, is uh, familiar with a base realignment enclosure, a, a BRAC. In, in that situation, uh, the services can determine what they, uh, what they want to cut. In this situation, they can't. They, they, are, uh, uh, they have to cut a certain percentage from all accounts. Now with sequestration, obviously, there's lots of concerns, not just for our national defense, but here in this community. What kind of impact do you think it'll have on this community? Most of the, uh, of the cuts will uh, come for civilian employees. Uh, unfortunately, that'll mean that uh, a lot of people will wo be working and being paid for four-day work weeks instead of five-day work weeks. That means uh, maybe no summer vacation, uh, maybe a very lean Christmas, very few meals uh, out, uh, that kind of thing. It's, it's going to be, uh, it'll be tough. Thank you so much for joining us. And for the Beaufort News Business Report, I'm Jamie Daly Vergara with the Beaufort Regional Chamber of Commerce. Thanks, Jamie. When we return, we have Kevin Libby, who brings us coverage from the oyster roast that took place over the weekend. And Jim Foster will join us to talk about the new superintendent that is making headlines. That's next. Hi, my name is Matt McElhaney, owner of City Loft Hotel, an upscale boutique hotel in downtown Beaufort. We are proud to be consistently ranked as the number one hotel in Beaufort based on TripAdvisor's guest ratings and comments. At City Loft, we value our neighbors in the low country. Whether you're taking friends by boat or need a romantic getaway in Beaufort, let us at City Loft extend hospitality while introducing what's new in urban hotel design. At City Loft Hotel, we are committed to customer service. When you stay here, you're always a local. St. Peter's 4th Annual Oyster Roast and Microbrew Festival kicked off Saturday morning with a 5K road race. For the ladies, Eileen Cangiano Heath was first to finish with a time of 21 minutes and 46 seconds. On the men's side, it was David Hirosik with a time of 18 minutes and 26 seconds, earning him bragging rights through next year. Attendees had a shell of a good time enjoying all they could eat oysters while grooving to the tunes of the Steppin' Stones. Two candidates seeking to represent the first in the United States House of Representatives were on hand. Great to be at the Oyster Roast at Live Oak Park. This is all about strong families, strong communities, strong commitment to passing on a better America to the next generation. That's what this campaign is all about. I think the thing that distinguishes us both is my breadth of experience. Being a soldier and a veteran, being a small business owner, being an elected official and an unelected official as a Secret Service agent and a New York State Trooper, I think I have a better understanding and a better perspective than any other candidate in this race. I really started getting interested in politics when I was working with youth development leadership training. And I was realizing that one of the biggest problems that we were having was not graduating enough kids from high school. We're not showing children that they can make it, that they can do whatever it is that they want in this country. So when I became a school teacher and started teaching economics, I continued that drive. So when this race came up, I thought here was an opportunity to move it from the classroom to Washington. So I have a much bigger audience. We might be able to actually learn something up there and make simple economics understandable for, even for these guys. Proceeds from the event benefited St. Peter's Catholic School and what was an unseasonably cool afternoon was warmed by both good cheer and a massive fire. Some low country artists had their work on display. From paintings to hand carved shucking tools, well, there was something for everybody. If you're into musical artists, you're in luck. Hilton Head Native's The Stepping Stones new album is out today. For the Beaufort News, I'm Kevin Libby. Rock on, Beaufort. Oh, oh, yeah. Kevin, joining me now is newsmaker Jim Foster, who's here with the Beaufort County School District. So how are you doing today, Jim? Doing well, thank you. Great. So you're here to tell us a little bit about public schools, and we've talked about this story a little bit already, but tell us your latest on the search for the school district superintendent. 
Well, that's something that's coordinated by our elected school board members. Uh, last week they voted and decided to offer a contract to Dr. Jeffrey Moss, who is currently the superintendent of Lee County Schools in Sanford, North Carolina. The next step is to negotiate a contract between the board and Dr. Moss. Absolutely, and we look forward to that too. I know there was also an academic competition among the high schools over the weekend, so talk to us a little bit about how this turned out. It was actually very exciting, and I, and I was there for part of it. Uh, this is a coordinated uh, partnership between the World Affairs Council of Hilton Head and the Beaufort County School District. We had eight teams. Uh, some of our high schools had more than one team. And it came down to, uh, this is a, a quiz, basically a quiz bowl format, uh, where they answer questions about current events, everything from Afghanistan and Pakistan to U.S. economic competitiveness. It came down to two teams. They had a tiebreaker between the green team from Beaufort High and the Columbia team from Hilton Head High. They had to name as many uh, countries as they could. There were OPEC nations and the green team from Beaufort High won. They will now go to the national competition in Washington next month. All right, very exciting stuff. We look forward to seeing how they do there. Now, I noticed something in the news recently about a new group of junior scholars who are being named. Talk to us about this program. That's a program that was started by the South Carolina Department of Education to identify talented, academically talented young students. Eighth graders take the PSAT, the preliminary SAT, and based on criteria that are set by the State Department of Education, junior scholars are selected. We've seen a tremendous improvement in that area. We had 88 junior scholars five years ago. This year we just found out we had 144, so that's a terrific improvement. Absolutely, and what can you tell us about the district's new academic requirements for athletes? 2.0 is the new requirement, and 93% of our students are meeting that requirement. That is something that just kicked in a couple of weeks ago, and that's very good, 93%. The kids who don't make it, there are special tutoring programs in place to help them lift their average up so they can be eligible to participate in athletics. All right, well, Jim Foster with Beaufort County School District, thank you so much for this great newsmaker. We appreciate it. Thank you. When we return, we'll have some very special news from reporter and Port Royal Councilman Joe Lee and Jeff Evans reports on entertainment after the break. Is it time to purchase for the one-of-a-kind person in your life? Over 60 years of service distinguishes Modern Jewelers as one of South Carolina's preeminent jewelry stores. We're proud to have been voted Beaufort's number one jewelry store 10 years in a row. Come visit us at 807 Bay Street. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. Joining us now is Councilman Joe Lee with our Port Royal News Update. Welcome, Joe. Uh, good to be here. Thank you. Good to have you. Now, Joe, I know there's a chance for people to learn about live oak trees. Can you give us the details on this story? Yes, Jesse. We're really fortunate. Uh, uh, next week, March 14th, uh, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we're hosting a meeting at the Union Church on 11th Street in Port Royal. Uh, it's interesting because it's sponsored by Clemson's Extension Office here in Buford. And it involves uh, some people from Clemson and also some people from Bartlett Tree Company up in Charlotte. Bartlett is the company that bought uh, the um, uh, Preservation Tree Service here in town. And they're going to be speaking, uh, the whole group is going to be doing a talk on live oaks, how to identify them, how to take care of them. And then following the discussion, uh, they're going to tour several uh, live oak um, areas in Port Royal. We have plenty of them. Uh, they're going to take the group around and explain to them uh, what needs to be done to take care of them and how to, how to uh, know when you have a problem with a live oak and also how to care and feed. So we're really pleased that we were able to do that. Everyone is invited. It's an afternoon event on a Thursday afternoon. There is a slight charge at the door of $10, but uh, please come and learn all about live oaks. All right, Joe, sounds like an interesting event. Now, do you have more information for us on the Paris Island Museum? Give us what you can here. Yeah, real quick, I, I was uh, very impressed to listen to uh, Dr. Wise last week when he spoke about the Paris Island Museum. 
And since it's in Port Royal, we have a real strong feeling about the museum. And I just want to underline what he said because it is a, a real great uh, place to go. The, it's fa family friendly, uh, it's free, it's easy to get on Paris Island. Uh, and the, the museum includes a lot of local stuff in addition to just being a Marine Corps museum. But we use it actually as the museum for the Low Country. And so I would encourage everyone who watches this program to please come and uh, check out the museum. It's the most visited venue in Beaufort County, and we're real proud of it. Absolutely, Joe. We'll do just that. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We appreciate your Port Royal report, and we'll speak to you next week. That's great. Look forward to it, Jessa. Well, thanks a lot. The Beaufort High School Theater Department gears up for its spring musical. How I Became a Pirate is based on the popular children's book by Melinda Long and David Shannon. Join Jeremy Jacob, a.k.a. Braid Beard, and his motley crew as they teach you how to speak and act like a real pirate. It's directed by Lorraine Fest. This hilarious production showcases the talented students of the BHS Theater, program well known for mounting full-scale quality musicals like Fame and Hairspray. How I Became a Pirate sets sail in the BHS Performing Arts Center at 7 p.m. Thursday through Saturday. March 7th through the 9th and again the 14th through the 16th. Advanced tickets can be ordered by calling 843-321-8156. Saturday the 9th is Military Appreciation Night and active duty military receive a discount with their ID. Both Saturday shows include family friendly events starting at 530 with free hot dogs, face painting and a kids costume contest with prizes. Now it's spring showtime again for the Beaufort Art Association. In its 52nd year the show is the longest running non-juried art exhibit in the uh, Low Country. This year marks some exciting changes. For starters, the show is moving from the Green Street Gym to the old Bayloft Market downtown. Now, this venue will showcase the quality of the artwork in a more gallery-like setting and hopefully draw even bigger crowds. And while the non-juried exhibit uh, remains the focus of the show, a juried exhibit has been added to the mix. Artists will have the opportunity to have their work reviewed by nationally known landscape painter Bill Davidson of Atlanta, and a select few will be juried into the show. Now, Christopher Groves of Charleston, also nationally known, will judge the non-juried portion of the show. The BAA Spring Show opens to the public on Saturday the 16th of March and runs through Saturday, March 23rd. The Old Bay Market Loft is open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And for those who prefer a kinder, gentler St. Patrick's Day, the USCB Festival Series continues on Sunday, March 17th at 5 p.m. Now this concert features six of the finest chamber musicians in the world. The performance features the music of contemporary Chinese composer Chen Yi with a piece written in 1998. Now during her early teen years, Chen Yi and her family were targeted by the forces of the Cultural Revolution and forced to leave their home and their music to labor in the countryside. Now fortunately for the music world, she now lives in Missouri where she teaches composition and continues to compose. The USCB audience will hear Chen Yi's Sound of Five for String Quintet. Other concert highlights include works by Mozart and Tchaikovsky. For more tickets information, just call 843-208-8246. You can pick up tickets at the USCB box office. And as always, pick up a free copy of Low Country Weekly. Click online at lcweekly.com and get what's out and about. Back to you. Jeff, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. Join us next time for your Beaufort News.